So, uh, do you guys ever pull practical jokes on each other when you're in the bus touring and just bored? You know what? In other bands, yeah. In this band, everybody's kind of really respectful, you know, because everybody's, you know, spent, me and David spent a lot of time on the water and different, you know, obviously he and Megadeth and me and my other bands. And you get to a point where it's just good to be left the fuck alone to read a book. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then come together and have a little bit of social time with the guys. And uh, this this band balances out really well like that, you know? Practical jokes, I don't know, man. I mean, there's some buses where, you know, you open up the uh, somebody's bunk and it'll be lined with, with gay porn or something like that. And everybody has a big snicker, but then what, you know? Yeah. So, it's actually pretty funny, though. <laughs> Pitching not in this band. It's not this one. It was about three other bands ago. <laughs> so, so, have you been punked? Um... Not as often as I'd like. Actually, I feel underappreciated, come to think of it. <laughs> so what's the worst anyone's ever punked you on a tour? I haven't got a good story about that, man, because nobody's ever... You know what? I don't think they care about me enough, dude. <laughs> Honestly not. I mean, you know, we. Um, I remember back in the day, uh, we were in a band... Uh, well, the White Lion Band played with, uh, with uh, Striper. Yeah. Kind of crazy. Was, uh, the last gig was in Washington, this little small theater. I don't remember the name of it right now, but... Um, it's traditional to kind of punk the bands, you know, as you go back and forth and do little things during their set. So uh, we ran right out to the corner and got some of those penthouse forums. You know, they used to throw the Bibles out to the audience. Well, we had our merchandise guy in a devil mask throwing these forums out. And he was, he was pretty good about it. He was looking out in the crowd going, okay, you're now, you're 14, you're okay, you're 22, you know. But um, so we did that, right? When we got on stage, we actually, we were flip-flopping the bill that that year and so uh, we opened up first and we had these uh, aluminum ramps and the guys from Striper had just put all these backstage passes on them upside down so it was like ice the things that stick to your feet and you couldn't stand on them and it was a pretty small stage so there wasn't much stage to stand in front of the things so it was gnarly man you know I had to get right to the corner of the thing so um, at the uh, when it was our turn now we we're pretty ticked off you know so um, we put they had a uh, uh, the drummer used to come down a little fireman's pole in front of his kit so he'd take a step forward, and uh, we put KY jelly all over it. So he got on it, <laughs> right to the floor. And then we did, I mean, it's no secret that people sampled sound, you know, sounds and voices, but back then it was kind of nobody really knew that was going on. So um, they were playing, and their road manager says, whatever you do, don't touch our samples, you know, because the man was made on its vocals. And they're great singers, but you can't have 50 voices coming out of three people, let's be realistic. So we... Um, while they were playing, I promised guys I won't go anywhere near the sampler. So me and my drummer and another guy were behind the re- the, rec- the rig, and just as they were getting up to the mic to sing one of their big choruses, we ran out, pulled the cables out, and there they were just dangling. And some of the guys didn't know, and they were up standing there. And one of the guys looked back. I think it was Oz looked back, and he was kind of laughing because he thought, "That's a good one." <laughs> Michael wasn't laughing so hard. <laughs> yeah, but hey, we were true to our word. We never touched the sampler at all. So. That's true. Yeah, that's true. And the vocals still sounded great. 